Надо микрофон, да? Добрый день, спасибо большое за Good afternoon and thank you for having, uh, having me here. That's the pleasure for me to make presentation here. This uh, session was adopted as the international artsy practice by Astro for this forum. My lecture will be devoted uh, to NSCLC only because you know that there are significant difference between non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. I will start with the uh, following overview. I will have. I will start with the uh, evidence base and proceed with the recommendations. Usually, people ask me why I'm talking about uh, somebody else's uh, opinion and not about yours. My university is unfortunately not the one that could have big randomized uh, trials and publish them as the uh, solid uh, recommendation base. That is why every time when we select uh, approaches to lung cancer treatment, we have to follow the recommendations that were set and published based and based upon the multiple randomized trials. Today, the optimal approach at the third stage of NSCLC includes big CT and uh, the uh, lymph status of uh, mediastinal area, the limit for diagnos diagnosis of uh, PCT and uh, the biopsy of the uh, damaged area. But biopsy is not obligatory, as well as uh, MRT of uh, brain for metastasis, because that's the common case with the third stage of uh, NSCLC. That's the uh, Robson uh, adopted uh, classification that uh, split the uh, types into three for three groups and here these are subdivided into four other groups when we talk about the third stage of um, NSCLC we have uh, here interestingly potentially surgical lung cancer with N4 and non-surgically treated lung cancer for N2 that's not by chance, because all these patients go to the multidisciplinary committee for determination of their further treatment. So even non-surgically treatable patients can become surgically treated with a certain chemotherapy. And I'll talk about that later. That's the algorithm based upon the recommendations of ASMO published last year and according to the following recommendations we can assign the type of treatment after the diagnosis was set. Computer tomography is the first thing to go with and second is lymph node uh, biopsy for damaged and non-damaged uh, nodes. If uh, lymph nodes uh, are not over long, then the PCT is not mandatory. Then we uh, determine the group of damaged lymph nodes of mediastinal area. This uh, category can be split into three groups for patients subject to surgery and non-subject to surgery. After the unexpected uh, 
finding of damaged lymph node that were not diagnosed previously. This group of patients go to category of patients that will be subject to a given chemotherapy. Those patients who didn't have uh, extended lymph nodes, but that was not proven. There was only the discrete enlargement are split into three groups with negative lymph nodes and one and two and three. Here we go. Look at the group of uh, patients with negative lymph nodes or N1. They go to surgical treatment and here they go either to a given chemotherapy or they get nothing. For N2 group, we also have a potentially surgical patients. For this case, we assign a multidisciplinary board that determines whether this patient should go to multidisciplinary treatment or to combine chemotherapy. If uh, CT shows uh, observable lymph nodes of uh, medicinal area and two, these uh, patients are not subject to surgery and they receive uh, both chemo and radiation therapy. Let us now brush upon our knowledge on the evidence level and the existing recommendations that we can follow. These recommendations are told to be uh, so we should decide whether these recommendations are mandatory or optional. The strongest evidence uh, is uh, level one or two, and recommendation level one or B. Further levels and degrees are not quite persuasive, not persuasive enough, so they are subject to dispute or they can be disregarded when we decide upon the treatment schedule. When we base upon recommendations, when we build upon recommendations, we should bear in mind that they were, they resulted from the outcomes of the randomized trials that showed the significant survival rate uh, Overall, as far as the third uh, stage of uh, lung cancer was concerned, the predominant treatment was radiotherapy without chemotherapy. And the most widespread course was split course, which is uh, currently um, out of place. Uh, it's not relevant anymore. And there is a, a chart strategy, just to remind you, which is uh, quite well, widespread in Great Britain, but due to uh, complex logistics uh, and the hyperfractional accelerated chemotherapy with 12 fractions two times a day, this uh, protocol was not quite uh, was not extended over the whole Europe, but for new asthma recommendations, this type of radiation is getting increasingly popular and it is recommended to institutions that can perform it uh, locally because it shown a great rise in overall survival rate. When uh, the chemotherapy was um, combined with the radiation therapy, the question arises, should we do that simultaneously or consequently? Most randomized trials that compared simultaneous and consecutive uh, therapies uh, 
So the benefits of uh, simultaneous therapy and the optimal schedule for chemotherapy was the use of uh, etoposite and cytoposite and platinum therapy. That's a very complicated table, but I just want you to have a look at this uh, trial, which is quite relevant for our topic. That's the uh, 9410 study that comprised uh, 611 uh, patients in total with vanillin uh, platinum indication. They showed the uh, they showed no difference between those groups as far as three year survival lifespan is concerned. For the first group, they had induced chemotherapy, and these through two groups had the consecutive uh, and uh, simultaneous radiation therapy, uh, respectively. Look at the difference as far as the three-year survival lifespan is concerned. There is no major difference, but as far as five-year survival rate is concerned, we have nine and 12-year uh, difference. So this trial played a key role in terms of favoring simultaneous uh, therapy as a recommendation standard. The second uh, question, before we start the um, associated uh, radiation therapy, should we have the induce of chemotherapy to reduce um, tumor mass? We radiation therapists don't really like the chemo because uh, patients come with a lower overall status exhausted, tired, and after induced chemotherapy, when we start a long-lasting radiation course, which will increase toxicity, is that a nice thing to do? In this regard, we also had a number of randomized trials. Two of them are worth scrutinizing. The first one is the study made by the American group with the carboplatin paclitaxel induction. And here we had radiation therapy versus uh, simultaneous uh, chemo plus radiation therapy. That's not the most recent one. It was published back in 2007. After that uh, induced uh, therapy has also been uh, assigned, but that's not the recomm recommended standard. They included uh, 366 patients into the uh, sampling group, and they divided them into two groups. The first with paclitaxel carbiplatin and the second group with induced chemotherapy, paxitaxol and carboplatin. Afterwards, they had radiation therapy with the 66 boost uh, therapy. So that was 66 grey in seven cycles. We they didn't get any statistical difference between two groups uh, overall. Uh, survival rate uh, fluctuations was minimal. Second randomized uh, study called uh, is called LAMP or multimodal protocol, which is also worth our attention. Here we talk about three groups as well with three different modes. The consecutive mode for the first group, uh, induction therapy for the second group, and the consolidation chemotherapy for the third group. Look here. Here we have the uh, standard uh, agents, paclitaxel and carboplatin, 
and uh, 63 gray for some weeks. Basically, as far as radiation therapy is concerned, they were pretty much the same. For the uh, consolidation therapy group, there was a small tendency towards better survival rate, but the toxicity was also higher. Here you can see a number of other randomized trials. Mm. The data has not yet been published, but the publications were in 2008, 2005, 2003. It's phase two and three trials, which show that they used consolidation method, and as a method, it was doxytaxel. In RTOG study group, the results Were, did not differ statistically, but doxytaxel increased complications but didn't increase overall survival. Here, the southeastern group of this trial uh, included gifitinib uh, as a consolidation agent. Uh, this trial was closed until they finalized because with gefitinib use, uh, they observed deaths in patients and gave high toxicity without the increase of overall survival. It decreased overall survival, in fact. Uh, the same group, second phase of trial, where they used oxytaxel as well, and they, there were tendencies uh, for in, towards improvement, and they published uh, that there was no report about the increase of toxicity uh, relevant to the application of doxytaxel. There were two other trials, one of them a Korean group. This group makes publications Although they didn't receive statistical difference, that was a trial of 2011, and in 2014, they again came back to the use of the same agent, and they used the same agent, writing that there is a trend towards the increase, but it does not refer to group 1A. Here they applied, and they had three groups. As a consolidation agent, they were using They were using dorsetaxel, cisplastin, and statistically, um, valid difference was not received, but with gemi, uh, cetabin, uh, they observed the increase of toxicity. Uh, this is another randomized uh, study of the Japanese group. They also had three groups, and they included vindesin, carboplatin, and par with paplitaxel. The same story. They didn't receive significant difference uh, among these three groups. Have a look at the group C. In this group, they were observing less toxicity versus uh, the previous uh, other, other two groups. Now, there was a question: How much? How many chemi chemical agents had to be included? One, two, or three? So randomized uh, trials. Uh, published the results. One of them is Gustav Frost's work published in 2004. It was a meta-analysis of 65 randomized trials where they stated that two agents, then the use of one agent, and the inclusion of the third chemotherapeutic agent does not improve overall survival, although it increases toxicity. The next 
uh, study of the group of radi uh, of the North American group, uh, which was homogeneous study, including patients of the third non-resectable stage, although there were not many patients. At the meantime of observation is shown here. The conclusions of these two studies, combination with the tuximab, the tuximab and uh, chemotherapy is admissible in the future. In line with that, this study is also interesting. They included chemotherapy agents, pometrexate and pometrex and carboplatin, rituximab, and these are the groups of patients with leukemia and NS NCCLC. You can have a look that they included 109 patients. The group was not so large, but the studies were accurately performed with typical, um, and uh, that was typical randomized study. The study showed that there were no significant differences between these two groups, but they divided them uh, depending on the type of uh, tumor. There were no differences in the responses for treatment between these two groups. They concluded that skin with pometrexate uh, had to be uh, ch changed. So there were no specific conclusions in that study. In 2015, this article was published in Clinical Oncology Journal, where they asked what is the, should be the best chemotherapeutic regimen if there are one or two medications that we would recommend to administer, uh, which uh, does not cause any doubt, despite the fact that now uh, we actively develop a pr uh, therapeutic, uh, uh, the inclusion of uh, personalized medicine, inclusion of target agents, sorry, there is not yet evidence. Uh, there is only, uh, so the only basic approach for the choice of chemo, uh, radiotherapy uh, ke that should be a, a chemical agent based on platina. Now let's come over to recommendations basing on two main recommendations. These are small recommendations and RTOG recommendations that were published in, 20, uh, in 2015. After we had discussed that, these recommendations were made on the basis of those randomized studies that show the evidence uh, for the level 1A. For sure, simultaneous uh, radiotherapy improves control and is a standard treatment, standard dose in radiation therapy. Of course, in different institutions, gradient dose uh, uh, was between 60 and 76 boost, uh, gray boost. Recommendations say that we mustn't give more than 66 gray. It does not increase overall survival, but increases toxic effect. In induction chemotherapy is a not recommended standard, although some institutions and doctors continue to administer induction chemo chemotherapy, although there is no evidence. And uh, of course, those patients who didn't receive full dose because of complications uh, uh, during simultaneous uh, radiation therapy, uh, this therapy can be added. There is no ideal uh, medication. The, the use of two agents, uh, cisplatin and pafletaxel, uh, is recommended. 
but there is an exception for those patients who cannot receive simultaneous chemoradiation therapy because of intolerance and high toxicity. Of course, it is recommended to have consecutive uh, chemoradiotherapy because only one radiotherapy is worse than consecutive chemoradiotherapy. Radiotherapy can be used only for those patients who uh, have counterindications uh, to chemotherapy due to some factors. So this is in this case, it's better to give radiotherapy than give nothing. So patients with full resection of local tumor uh, and uh, with uh, lesions of lymph nodes to improve local control, although it may not increase overall survival, but it has to be applied after chemotherapy, postoperative chemotherapy, in case there are negative uh, lymph nodes but microscopic or macroscopic resection of primary tumor. In this case, chemoradiotherapy has to be given, but not after chemotherapy, but simultaneous chemoradiotherapy because uh, uh, th there is a high risk of local recurrency. Uh, patients with non-resectable stage three, uh, so these situations have to be discussed on a multidisciplinary committee and they can be referred to the category of patients for whom they can indicate preoperative hemoradiotherapy. But these patients have, uh, will, uh, with those with low bactemia, uh, without uh, weight loss and good status, relatively young, and uh, I don't know, but uh, women, because it has sh been shown uh, and, and uh, with the lymph node lesions only in one region. As for chemo radiotherapy, what, what kind of radiotherapy is the standard at present? The standard for today, uh, the method or technique of radiotherapy has not been uh, stated. And uh, uh, there have been randomized uh, studies in 2007, which uh, that was a retrospective study. They compared groups of 68 patients who were treated in MRI uh, and, and IMT. IMT cause less complications on the part of the lungs. One more study where they compared two groups, 160 patients. They treated uh, MRI and toxicity on, uh, on the level of fibrosis was less in one group, although this study is not uh, so accurate, there is no evidence and there is no ground to speak about any recommendations. I'm just giving you this slide to have some idea about proton therapy. It's not a standard, even if you talk about NC, uh, CLC, and although this picture is so beautiful that it can show us what sort of advantages uh, can we can see uh, in proton therapy in comparison with 3D uh, radiation therapy. Uh, let us see organs at risk, there are differences between them and the coverage PTV of uh, primary tumor is almost the same. Well, of course, uh, I may talk about our experience. Our experience is not a randomized study, just analysis of one group of patients treated with uh, uh, CMRT. In our institute, we treated about 300 patients with a third uh, uh, grade uh, of um, lung cancer. We treated the group of patients with 
uh, in 2009-2010, that treatment was standard, uh, but the boost dose was not 66, but 68 gray. Until 2009, when we had used 3D in case of uh, 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 squamous uh, lung cancer, uh, we used 76 grays. It was before there was recommendations which tell that we shouldn't raise the dose because it does not influence survival. We use computer tomography in planning lung cancer. Why is it important? Here you can see that PET shows accumulation uh, in the node. So we shouldn't include this zone into radiation, and we can decrease the volume of radiated lung and decrease the toxic complications. That's the same picture, more visible since MRI is a really debatable, disputable method. So we need to analyze histogram here in order to make uh, the 20 volume of lungs uh, over the 30 percent of the total lung volume. As far as complications are concerned, we had acute uh, pneumonias and uh, as far as the overall survival in my uh, hospital is concerned, we don't have mm, much more dramatic results as far as the randomized trials are concerned. Uh, we have a very we a two year survival is forty five percent and five year twenty seven percent. So to conclude with we should uh, make tailor made decisions for each patient, but when we talk about the third stage of NSCL, so we should follow the recently published recommendations. Maybe we will have new standards in the future because we have studied the randomized trials with the new agents with targeted uh, therapy, but so far we have no evidence and no information to rely upon. That's why we have to stick to the recommendations that have one A recommendation level. Thank you for your attention.